And obviously we're focused on football today, but it'll be hurling next week. It's been a, an unbelievable run. And it's a little bit special as well, I suppose, Brendan. I was talking to Mary O'Connor down at the, this free childcare facility in Milton Malva during the week, and she was saying that, you know, it's coming to the end of the CBS cycle now. We know the amalgamation of the schools is happening in the next couple of years. So what a wonderful way it would be, I suppose, to mark that as well. We're looking through that team, Brendan. It's littered with lads that have played at minor level for Clare, at 20 level for Clare, and at senior level for their club as well. They're bringing huge experience here today. Absolutely, you have a great mix there. Um, a lot of in, in Simon club players there would have won junior championship in the past year, won number 17 county championship in the past year. Good lads from Kilfenora, like some Mark Lachlan there from Corrafeen, who have really run through the Munster club with Corrafeen. You know, so plenty of quality sprinkling through the team, and hopefully they can, can play their best game of their game. Speaking of the successes last year, Brendan, you got to celebrate? Yeah, absolutely. We had a great night last night in the most time with Jim Devon and his father, Jimmy, there um, from Dublin and Kieran Keaton, the chairman of the board. We um, got to the Super Finals and we, we had won there a few titles over the last couple of years with junior and minor. So it was a great night last night. Unfortunately, the CBS boys um, couldn't delay it, but you know, hopefully they'll be celebrating tonight. Absolutely. We'll, we'll be celebrating in the falls ourselves on, on Paddy's Day for the sisters' wedding, but we'll talk about that uh, more this afternoon. Haywood, looking through the paths to the finals, Brendan, it's interesting in that both teams have been doing something similar in that they've all been scoring goals, but very, very tight at the back. Yeah, Haywood um, put up with scores a lot of games. There are more teams that we obviously don't know anything about, really, you know, so um, looking over the pitch and teams have maybe an inch in size under the Simon lads, but you know, I'm sure probably might back in size that the uh, Simon lads. CBS boys will bring it to plenty of fight, I know, where they make up for it. Um, yeah, as I said, we don't know much, they've been winning their games easily, except for one game, which the first game broke the beat in, but they came back and beat that crowd significantly again after that. Mm. So, you know, that, uh, have cruise to the final, um, so we still have to play. Very slight breeze blowing from right to left as we look at it away from the uh, scoreboard end. A fine appointed battle of slow it is here too. Uh, the Chadwick store across from us and Fair Play to them, they're sponsoring the scoreboard away to our right hand side here as well. But just going through, we'll say, take Haywood's last two games. They scored 217 in the Leinster final, they put up 210 in the semi final the last day. And then on the other side, you see CBS in the Simon 312 back to back. That is, you know, that will tell you we're probably in for a fairly open affair here. Yeah, you can see as good as any over seven as you can see you have got transpires here, both teams will be able to just four defense on either side. Just on that there, Kieran was back then, we won the main score there from the time in unfortunately. He's out with broken leg there that he had in the semi-final up to the dome. So we wish Kieran the best in that recovery and surgery over the week as he went down there and be behind the team all the way through you know, but big loss to the and another big loss, Brendan, is a, a fellow you know well, obviously your own fellow Brindy, the joint captain, along with Mark. Um, that hamstring injury, not fit to start, but maybe we might get to see him with 10 or 15 to go. Yeah, um, it was great to see uh, you know, everyone out that hamstring has been bothering him since after Christmas, really, and just as it came out. And, um, it's, it's great to see him with it, you know, but, uh, you know, my team have been managing there through the Munster Finals, through the Ireland Semi Finals, the Cruz and Deer, the and Brindy. But this team, they're a great team ethic, they're all able to play ball. And you know, every one of them that's out there I am sure you see this just as well. Yeah, and on, from a management point of view, like you, you couldn't ask for better than Tara in like her or coaching C V is as good as the what's in the company. Yeah, we're to Tara, she she gets us one of the best over there. Jason Daffy has her out there, Mick Clossy is back in the hand this year, Mick retired there last year, he was the longest school's team there for nearly 40 years, he was over all the teams that won Munster titles back in the 80s and that, and uh, Mick's and Mick back involved for this year, and yeah, Tara absolutely gets the best out of them there, and, you know, does great work around there on the CBS, and a couple of other great teachers there, Dan Seeley is there, Brian Dillon, Johnny Keeley, all that, you know, 
football field, which is great to see it. I've, uh, I've seen some very, very strange uh, mascots, Brendan, coming to, to games over the last couple of years, but the one that's here in front of us is certainly one of the more color, colourful that we have uh, we've, we've seen throughout the year. I'm just trying to describe it. It's like a, a horse on a stick with uh, butterfly wings out the back of it. Uh, I, I don't think that's in the statement, is it? We'll have, to, we'll have to do further investigation into that. Uh, maybe, maybe the cameras might be able to, to pick that up there for uh, the, those people watching on our live stream as well. Remember, we're, all, we're on radio and uh, online as well this uh, afternoon. If you want to watch the game, uh, head over to the Clare FM website or indeed the social media channels as well, and uh, you can do just that. Or if you're in the car or just washing the floor at home, stick on the radio. We've got you covered in both. The both teams away down to our right-hand side. We've got Ennis Diamond in their final huddle down there. Haywood in their maroon jerseys away to our left-hand side. Perfect conditions, Brendan, I suppose. Uh, certainly there'll be no one saying that the weather is spoiling the game of football today. Yeah, we know what the notion of the slide green is mentioned there earlier. Um, you know, so we can wait to see what comes to them for Oran Levine. The playing of Oran Levine here in Duggan Park. Please God, two national titles coming to Clare in the space of a couple of hours. What a, a boost that would be. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's great to have teams contesting any competition or anyone contesting. We have the business in the division. Two teams in the just waiting for our match referee to get the game underway here this afternoon just making sure everything is okay our match official Brendan Healy from Ross come on he has the ball inside in the middle of the park game is about to get underway here he bends down lifts it up and off we go first ball breaking in towards that uh, Haywood attack and it's a good interception coming in there from Sean Rin just kicking that ball back only towards his own 21 meter line where it's Brian Duggan big full forward is the man that came out to win that ball nice little play into the center in towards the center forward Sean Fitzpatrick the wing back Killian Bourne that ball is well broken up outside by James Condon from the Ina Kilimona Club. Fine footballer he is too, breaking away from the defence. Now coming in Simon through their centre back, Joshua Blyler. What a year he had with the Hurlers last year as well. Joshua Blyler with the ball. Very, very close to the sideline here. It's ripped out of his hands by the centre back, Connor McWay. Into the middle it comes towards the big midfielder, Davin McAvoy, coming right down the centre, attacking the D. Big hit put in there by the wing back, Brian McNamara. You'd certainly have felt that one. First shot at the post, in towards the post. The goal, the hands go up because it's gone straight between them. Brian Duggan from the Spink Club in County Leash. First score for Haywood Community School. And immediately, Brendan, you can see there's a very much a direct approach that they're taking. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they put up on the big pressure there to make the ball and put the back up and then uh, take the field and put the ball and keep the first time chance to the next leg. Yeah, they have done it. Marco Lockler wearing 15 but very much playing around the half back line at the moment possibly as that spare man as well as we watch the kick out for John Ney from the Clonlear club in North Clare he's a kid hog so watching some of his kick outs in the warm up very much a man that likes to place it with a little bit of accuracy he's done just that on this occasion now first chance for Miss Diamond to build around the middle of the park nice little hand off there Guyna comes up in support towards the 65 metre line decides to spread it out towards this near stand side Liam Potter has it decides to go direct right into the corner good hands inside as well from 
the man wearing the number 11 jersey in on the line from Ennis Diamond gives it back to Mark Kinnahar nice little triangle of passes to get it back to Cotter Guyler has it now on, it, on the 45 metre line attention coming in for one of the Haywood players in the middle of the park but the play will go on it's O'Loughlin that has it gives it in towards uh, Sean Wynn on this occasion spreads the ball to the far side of the field having to be patient long ball inside when he claimed the mark that's intelligent play from Aino Rewai made the burst from the 21 metre line came out about 30 yards out from the post had the wherewithal to stick up the paw tell the referee he was going to take the mark and now let's see as he has his shot at the post it drops just hits the top of the crossbar but it stays out the cornerback goes back to try and control it Sam Quinn first scoring chance gone to begging two minutes gone it's Haywood leading by a point to no score Gussie Carroll on the main street from Innes Diamond the commentary sponsor this afternoon ball turned over by Mark Kelleher of Innes Diamond good hands from him to get away towards Sean Rin decides to link up with the midfield partner Woods back to Rin again off the left boom and it's gone straight over the bar great persistence from the Innes Diamond men to turn over that kick out the midfield partners linked up ball to boot straight over the bar one point apiece three minutes gone encouraging start yeah great score there from Sean they really put the uh, able defence under pressure there Mark Kelleher yeah, very important when you have a forward line as potent as that, that there's no defender now get the ball out too handy. This one has chipped out and again the pressure's put on and it's Mark Malachlan going back to offer himself as the option. Here's Geiler on the near side of the field, gives the lovely little hand pass inside towards Kayla Hurrigan. He's come on to a lot of ball in these first three minutes. Takes the turn inside, thought there was an old stray leg stuck out there, but he got away with it. Josh Geiler holds on to the ball, nice recycling through the hand pass is very intelligent play. Vahan has it back now, 30 yards out, has a kick at the post, but the wind tails this one inside. Good work by the corner forward, plays it back around. It's in McKinnon trying to come on to it again, just picking that one up, slicing it up into the air. Goes Joshua O'Brien, dropping around the 20 metre line, it comes back down. He would survive on that occasion as Adam McWay brings it clear up towards Sean Fitzpatrick on this occasion, coming down along this near stand sideline. Shrugs off the challenge, big strong unit this fella gets the hand pass away to the man that opened the scoring. Brian Duggan puts it into the centre. Another big hit in contact there, good tackle it was, but still everybody rises now to see where this ball is going in towards the 21 metre line it comes could be a big chance here for the man wearing the number 9 jersey slipping as he falls but puts it over the bar that's Cahill Murphy from the Harps another good score from them they've been clinical so far two shots at the post two points on the board they need 2-1 with four minutes gone yeah the, the, the good point there from the team and then working hard there but it's really alone a bit of contact to go on the there so Simon may be giving away a bit physically to this team so I think this time needs to keep the ball moving and support his contact for the hits if he can do that stuff he's looking for but uh, when it gets into the uh, physical stuff I think they're just giving away from all the slight legs yeah, we've seen it on a couple of times here. They've tried to kind of play the wings. Kaylor has come on to a bit of ball. And on the far side, we see Joshua O'Brien trying to keep it kind of wide as well. But playing the two inside, obviously, Mark has come back to, to sweep. And uh, worth bearing in mind as well that whatever bit of a breeze is here, I'm just looking down at the flags. They are fairly blowing. It's uh, backing Haywood at the minute. So maybe a, a containment job for the first 15 or 20 as we watch uh, the number nine next year has to come off. Murphy that got that last point. Uh, he's picked up an injury, so an early blow for them uh, here in the first, first what, five minutes. Yeah. And since he's slightly limping, was a, he was down here in the middle of the park just a couple of moments ago to kind of put him in full forward maybe to, to get his breath back. But uh, disappointing for a young lad to see his All-Ireland final come to an end after just five minutes. But his team lead 2-1 and it was his point that did just that ball. Kicked out to the middle of the park up they go for it. Well read the break there from Liam Cotter. Now trying to get that hand pass away into the centre. Good strong running from Shane Woods. That's the first time we've seen that so far this afternoon. And still is going. Brian McNamara trying to get the hand pass across him towards O'Brien. Recycles it back around again to Woods. He puts the hand pass into the danger zone, in towards Aino O'Brien. Turns it over. First chance of the goal, and it flashes across. A brilliant left footed effort it was, but it just flashed across the goal and wide. Very opportunistic inside there. The referee's saying it did go wide. It's not the first time we've seen in a Simon forwards, Brendan, uh, chasing the lost cause inside. That ball is holding up in the wind. Almost the perfect chance there. Yeah, it seems to be, but I suppose just prior to that, we seem to have two or three chances maybe to kick it over the bar. But it was half a goal chance. Brian Mack just flashed it right across the board. Unlucky, he could have gone in and then he was across the board. And 45 now. Yeah. Yeah, a great sweeping move up the field from the Simon. Very encouraging after Liam Cotter went one of the great break off. Uh, Shane Woods has been certainly punching holes when he goes at that direct running style early towards here but it is a 45 referees and the umpire had the conversation inside and decided there was a deflection on it that 45
45 is taken by Sean Rain. It goes low, but Rewine has picked it up inside, trying to recycle it back around again. Chance for Joshua O'Brien on the turn, but the uh, referee is right on the spot and determines that the lock came in, but the defender put his hand on the ball on the ground. Uh, fortunate enough, but it'll be a chance for Sean Rain to get his first point of the afternoon. But again, that came about turnover in possession, Brendan, but the pressure came on straight away. It did, in fairness, yeah. Um, it was a great block, really, by the Haywood defender, but he was unfortunate with some of the pressure when he touched the ball on the ground, so it's a level of the game, which I don't want to jinx on him. With seven minutes on the clock, slightly to the left-hand side of the post, standing on the 21-metre line, he looks happy enough for that. It goes over the bar, and indeed over the wall as well. If there's uh, somebody outside the ground here that wants to get a handy ball, they can run out and put it into the boot of the car. Uh, two points apiece, seven and a half minutes gone. Uh, in a time, we'll be happy enough for how they settle with it. Yeah, look at it, it's up and down teams, anybody's game at the moment, it's two very even teams, and they may be away from all the teams, there's four teams working their socks off at the moment. And we can see that as three in a time and attackers chase down the full back there, Quinlan, but he does well, sells the dummy and finds the space and gets away towards Killian Byrne, raiding up, now towards the 65 metre line, puts the hand pass inside, Duggan has come deep down to win this one in Duggan Park, and he's the bump getting it back to Sean Fitzpatrick, two big star men wearing both 11 and 14, and it's Fitzpatrick that has it back again on the 21 metre line, being met there by a good challenge from Darren Rewine turns him over gets the ball to ground and he's touched it on the ground again we can see that work rate very very evident great tackle it has to be said from Darren Rewine and immediately then once the ball went to ground Brendan they went scrapping for it Absolutely, and uh, that's what they're trying to do at the minute as Liam Cotter is very, very close to the sideline now, has to go back towards Guiler, takes that on, lovely little pop pass in towards Sean Keneally, sells the big dummy, kicks off the right foot, gives it now to Marco Lachlan, the current Finn man puts it all the way across and it's a chance now for Innes Diamond to punch that hole right down that centre channel again, and that's exactly what they're trying to do, it's Guiler hooking on to the end of it, he's on the arc of the D, probably too far out to swing the boot at it, has to look up and find Mark Kelleher, turns inside off the challenge, gives it back again to Guiler, all this happening about 30, 40 yards, out from the Haywood goal. Joshua Vaughan puts the ball across the 45 metre line where Marco Lockton's waiting. High challenge around the neck there. Referee is happy enough though to let the advantage accrue. The shot comes in from Brian McNamara. It'll go wide, will it? No, the referee is happy enough to let the play go. I thought he'd put it back to the advantage there, to be honest, but he was happy enough that it was uh, at the time had a lapse in the time and it turned it over again. It's Liam Connolly back into the centre, in towards Aina Rewind, off the outside of the boot, just couldn't measure the angle. He was very, very tight in fairness to him. He was inside the 21, right hand side of the post tried to just guide it into the breeze at the far side but again you can see Brendan when they're putting the pressure on they're forcing errors in that Haywood defence yeah absolutely I think just to keep putting pressure on that test up the point Nine and a half minutes gone, two points apiece. Gussie Carroll on the main street in Ennis Diamond, our commentary sponsors here this afternoon. Ball goes long. In the way with midfielder McIlroy tried to pick that up. He gets it at the second time of asking. Now he comes up towards the arc of the D, swings the left boot at that, but it's gone high wide and not at all pretty as it goes out to the left hand side and wide. Two points apiece coming up on ten minutes gone here in Duggan Park in Banalas Snow. Thankfully, uh, overhead, it's staying dry for the minute. Not sure, I'd say we'll have to have the wipers on our right and the drive home, maybe we won't mind that if there's a title coming back to the CBS and Ennis Diamond. We'll be back here again, of course, seven days' time when they are playing uh, the Offaly crowd, Kilcormac Kilahi, in the hurling final as well. The Michael Cusick Cup wouldn't be mighty to bring that back to North Clare. to be all sorts of poetic. At the minute, though, very much focused on this football game as that kick-out has gone astray, and it's the Haywood men that have it in the hands of Sam Quinn, their corner back inside the 65-metre line. Referee is the hand up for advantage. Cormac McAway, the centre-back, has it. The hand comes down and he goes and takes the 1-2. They've put a few of those together and they they find the space when they do it. It's McAway Allen this time as he gets turned over again. Great pressure put on there by Joshua Vaughan. Played off the ball. Very good defending. Brave defending it was as well. He knew the tackle was coming, Brendan, but wasn't afraid to put the hit in. Yeah, they got the bodies in around the ball player again there and, and, and got the ball to the out. And the Haywood came in at the middle there. Really some good ball there, number 11. Um, trying to go through the phases trying to keep it wide to maybe just negate that bit of physicality you see Mark Kelleher big good boot on the inside of this time coming in again just a shot off the right hand the right of the boot he was on the right hand side tried to screw it with the outside of the boot it went to the right hand side and wide it's obviously quite a tricky breeze down there Brendan they're not getting the full brunt of it here in this time yeah I suppose two shots here from the right hand side you know they just trying to get it on the right hand side 
wind was something they didn't have to worry about in the dome uh, that's for sure what a facility that is up there in uh, Bacon uh, just near the Knock Airport as we watch him wait and see that kick out is taken now he's uh, picked up again this man Fitzpatrick has been very prominent early doors and so too is Shane Woods does very well indeed to turn that ball over and the two midfielders indeed working their socks off here this afternoon and Sean Wren puts it out the far side of the field and tells McNamara you take it on the next bit but he was surely pulled around the shoulder there referee is coming back I think he's going to have a quick chat with uh, one of the Haywood players I think he's not too happy with uh, Killian Bourne I think it is going to be a free thing this time when the player resumes and uh, neither referee nor player Brendan are uh, too quick to go talking to one another yeah, I'm not exactly sure now. Maybe have some match to referee or something. Um, just 17, yeah, he came in. Club to come on there. But, um, yeah, Shane Woods shown well there early on, being shot up by Mac. You know, a couple of times. Um, you know, Yellow car there, so picked up early for Connor Fitzpatrick to substitute the come in uh, for uh, Brian Duggan there a couple of moments ago. As we watch Paddy Wheel in the wing back over on the far side of the field and maybe have the jersey swung around him there by Joshua O'Brien. Referee picked up on that, was playing the advantage, decided none was coming, so Haywood will build from the back up towards the 65 metre line. They come hand pass into the centre, in towards Killian Brown. The ball ripped away from him, but again, very, very intelligent defending and first to the breaking ball is Guyler. Looks up, tries to get the pass away, but almost basketball like. There. It's a very, very high and a very, very dangerous challenge too, it has to be said. It was high around the neck and there was fair intent in it. Uh, you don't like to see, but uh, thankfully uh, Liam Cotter is back up onto his feet. The referee is coming over to calm things down and uh, I would be amazed, Brendan, if he doesn't have a little chat there with the number seven from Hayward. I'd imagine it'll just be a yellow card and a copper self on is going to be issued by our referee. That's exactly what happens. Uh, Brendan Healy telling Killian Burns that's two yellow cards that were picked up early on for the men from uh, Leash. So, I mean, if you're a manager now, Brendan, you're kind of saying go and attack them and draw the next one. Yeah, Marco Lachlan's influence certainly going as he gets that ball away into the centre to Shane Woods going right down the middle again tries to get the hand pass away towards Vaughan but the referee says he threw it it's been a talking point in Gaelic games hasn't it the throw and hand pass not so much in Gaelic football though but we've seen one here this afternoon and it's been uh, judged that it was Shane Woods who did it on that occasion so Colin Byrne wearing number 13 but playing around his own 21 metre line two points apiece 14 and a half minutes gone here in Duggan Park in Banlas Snow and as you said Brendan in his time will be very much the happier with how they settled well able to turn it over and he's on half back line as well Joshua Vaughan a very tidy hand pass into the, into the man Caleb coming forward just lost it there he was shouldered off the ball he was shown it off the ball and uh, well the referee is going to bring things back uh, I think it was mistimed more than anything but the ball had certainly been released in fairness though I think the full back was committed to the challenge he just followed through on it but uh, we'll just go back and make sure that uh, everything is okay there uh, no real malice in that Brendan I think in fairness to the young fella he had just gone for it before the ball had been released yeah I suppose the Prince I think you're right seems to be letting a bit go on the teams now are probably seeing that a bit and uh, just in his limits really you know so, uh, the game uh, it certainly is and thankfully Mark Keller is back up on his feet he's got a big role to play here with Ennis Diamond and are to be crowned champions at the minute it's Conor McAway with the joint captain for Haywood has the ball on his own 45 metre line it's Sam Quinn now coming on to it he has been very prominent as well Colin Byrne has it again you can see Ennis Diamond getting back and just guarding that 45 metre line it's almost as if they're happy enough for Hay Haywood to bring it that far and they know then they can swarm and turn it over and break at pace and certainly get the likes of Woods and Wren punching right down the middle very painful patient and very disciplined so far, Brendan, of what they've been doing. Yeah, 
once again the minute they forced them into kicking the ball possession has been turned over and it's Sean Rin behind to tidy things up and plays it out the far side of the field again coming right the way forward now is Darrell Rewine wearing the number three jersey looks up and there's a bit of space between him and the next green CBS so he has to go back and it's back to Josh Guiler he comes and it's Shane Woods and Guiler linking up a nice little loop might we see that in uh, Twickenham later on this afternoon in the rugby as we watch him waited by McNamara has it across it goes for Rewine again now coming down right down the middle of the field it's Marco Lachlan the on-field captain putting the ball back around nice patient play from the inner style men just waiting to see when that space open up inside and Auckland takes it on forced to sweep back around but he's getting the play and getting the support from Shane Woods on his own 45 metre line referee goes out to the far side of the field he has spotted something uh, he has blown his whistle he pointed towards the goals but I'm not quite sure Maybe there's a bit of a jersey pulling, I think, as, uh, as a player was trying to make a run, but I'm not overly sure on that one. Yeah, I think Brian Mack was trying to make a bit of space there. I think that was done for a pull there, and but, but it didn't seem to be too much, but uh, he, he blew for that, and the kid's still in there, but he's maybe a little go another way. So, yeah, uh, it's a feat in the time, and something fine there. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take it as long as they're coming. If he's going to give it to them, we'll take it. And uh, we'll watch Sean Lynn taking this ball with the bright orange boots outside there, hanging and giving it plenty height. It's drifting all the way across, though. Mark Kilher almost got on the end of it on the in line. It drifts to the right and wide. 17 and a half minutes gone, two points apiece. The kind of game, Brendan, when we look back through the score lines of the other uh, results up to this point, this, this, certainly from a score line point of view, neither side will have experienced this. Yeah, yeah, look at the score, it's all the long man. But I think all teams, I suppose, all Ireland at stake today, the stakes are higher every day as the competition is. So I think all teams have been a bit of a certainly have a couple of goal chances going to stay well. and Josh O'Donnell wins that kick out and now decides to sweep the foul coming right down the middle busting through the 31 metre line gets the hand pass out across towards Joshua O'Brien can he get the shot away no great defending there it was Shane Woods punching the hole down the middle again and he's still not uh, cleared from chasing up that ball the wing back has it though Paddy Whelan on this occasion a good tidy play in fairness from the Haywood defence on this occasion on their own 13 metre line they have to be patient they have to be accurate and they're doing just that with Ty Deneen their corner back and suddenly there's a bit of space now for Miss Man Fitzpatrick to move into a long angle ball out towards Killian Byrne he decides to leave it off and decides to continue his run and it's Connor Fitzpatrick from Tim O'Hoy but what a tackle put in there again fantastic defending by the Innes kind of to turn that over it was James Cullen got the hand in and the referee has decided that he spotted something there maybe a little pullback or a touch on the ground it'll be a free in for Haywood but back to that tackle from James Cullen Brendan from a coaching perspective textbook yeah absolutely there's nothing wrong with that great Nineteen minutes gone, two points apiece. Gussie Carroll's electrical on the main street, and then it's time for commentary sponsors here this afternoon. No doubt, everybody in Gussie Carroll's very much invested in how this game will go for the CBS. We wait and see this free this to be taken by the number ten, Alan McAway. He looks to have measured that brilliantly. In fairness to him, the free taker. It was the first one he had with a sight of goal, forty-five yards out. He splits the post, three points to two, and a warning there, Brendan, that anything given away with this fella kicking them will be punished. and seem to have a bit of distance on it as well and not a major amount of effort put into kicking it so maybe we should give that freeze a, a little bit more credence in, in how we're summing up how this first half is going 3-2 10 minutes to go to half time it's Haywood from Leeds in front of Ennis Lyman CBS it's Conor Fitzpatrick on the ball very very close to that uh, near sideline right in front of the Haywood substitutes and the referee spotted a free and it's been put right into the mixer but again that danger being averted as a boot came in there from Brian McNamara but now in along the inline come the Haywood minutes Fitzpatrick what a save outstanding stuff from John Nay came out and closed down the angle as it was Fitzpatrick bearing down a goal along the end line very very brave put his body on the line deflecting it out for a 45 first big call for the goalkeeper Brendan pass with flying colours made himself big as all good goalkeepers will do cut down the angle and got the ball deflected to the better left hand side and wide and now it's going to be a 45 to be taken by Brian Douglas Hayward leading 3 points to 2 20 minutes 45 seconds is what the clock is telling us 
It will hit 21 by the time this ball goes dead. Will the scoreline have changed? No, it just goes to the left hand side of the post wide. Let off from it in a Simon point of view. Not an easy kick though with a swirling breeze outside there. And a kick out once again for John Nay from the Clanlear Club. Putting the ball down on that 21 metre line wearing those black uh, leggings underneath. It's fairly cold. I don't blame him for doing that. If the leggings I just stuck them on myself this morning too before coming up the road, I can tell you. As he came, takes this kick out, but it goes short on this occasion. It's Alan McAway. And now there's some overlap coming again. It's Fitzpatrick. The ball just out of his hands though because Marco Lachlan was inside to put him off. And the sight of the Cora Finn man was enough to frighten the ball out of his hands. And Ennis Simon now coming along down along this near stand sideline. Great hands from then as they work it forward towards Woods. And Rin now coming down along this near stand sideline. Does very well indeed. Rin gets it into the centre. Gets the call from Guyler to come up in support. Joshua Guyler. What a family they have been around the Ennis Simon and the Kingdom Order Club for the last couple of years. And he's still going, Guyler. The ball is high. It's drifting in towards the post. But it's just going to go to the left and wide. Barely. Joshua Vaughan almost kept it in. All that hard work, Brendan. We've we said it a couple of times now. There's been a lot of scoring chances out there that haven't been available so far. Yes, they're still very much in the game, just a point between the sides. Haywood in front, three points to two. 22 minutes and 22 seconds on the clock as the kick out comes right down the centre. And Gliner's inside underneath it and it gets the hand pass away very quickly. It gets it out towards Niall Hogan. Long ball from him down to the corner towards Joshua O'Brien. He's on the 45. Hogan goes back to take it off him again and now it's O'Brien having it. He has cut down the angle. Lovely angle run off the shoulder. Chance here as the defence swarms back. Gets the hand pass across here now once more towards Rin. Can he these two boys at midfield, Woods and Rin, are some combination. Great work on the far side of the field by Niall Hogan and Joshua O'Brien. And when it came to Sean Rin, made no mistake with the finish. Three points apiece, 23 minutes gone in the opening half. Yeah, the pitch gets more work on Sean Rin. by Woods and It's a mouthpiece issue, actually. Uh, did he spot that the mouth guard wasn't in? I think he pointed down at the sock as much as to tell him that that's uh, not the place for it. So maybe that's what it was. It's a cheap enough yellow card picked up, but the ball has been turned over cheaply again, all because of that in a time and pressure. Now can that hand pass comes in? Now that's brilliant bravery from Kelleher. Gets the ball down along this near stand sideline, ahead of him, and roaring for it is Aina Rewine. He's done the right hand side, 21 metres out. Has to get the hand pass back. Liam Cotter bravely up, gets straight into the back. That's a yellow card surely coming for Sean Fitzpatrick. In fairness, it was everything Cotter had to do. He did it brilliantly, cleverly, turned his back on the challenge, and your man straight into the back between the shoulder blades. That's a sore one on any day, and that's a talk of a program. Ah, yeah, it was a reckless challenge. He was up in the air, taking the ball down, and he goes straight into the back of him. But no way to play the ball at all. Well, Cotter has certainly been in the wars, Brendan, as you mentioned earlier, Doris has been the cause of two yellow cards coming to the Haywood Mill and just looking down at him there, but had not the job out of him. hopefully that might be the end of it because, uh, you know, it's an all-Ireland final, you want to enjoy it some bit as well too, maybe. Sean Rain has the ball, 30 yards out from the goal, thought about taking it short, decides now to have a cut at the post, hangs it high, up into the ball in a slow air, but it's going to go out to the left hand side and wide. Again, you just wonder on the possession count. Maybe if you've recycled it into that wind and it down the clock a little bit. But still, 25 minutes gone with debris, debris certainly picking up in the last five, Brendan. You'd be happy enough. Yeah, look, I think the Huge. We will hope it will come to the men in the green jerseys. It is the maroon of Haywood that has the ball now. It's Sam Quinn breaking up towards the 21 metre line. In it comes there to Connor Fitzpatrick. Recycles it back. Alan McAway, the joint captain, sells the dummy. There's a man free inside in the edge of the square. Someone better get as far as him. And he is covered now and forcing them back. Back towards the centre back on the 45 metre line. And they press up now. Referee has the hand up playing advantage away there. Sean Fitzpatrick has the ball. 
Sell to Dummy we're going to come back for the free but if they had looked up there at uh, the midfielder McAvoy was inside but in fairness to Daryl Rewine he was quick enough to spot that the space had to be closed down and he did just that and we'll wait and see as this free kick is taken angled into the corner in towards the man wearing the number 8 jersey Davin McAvoy swings the left boot that's a fine score and a score made of simplicity as well and run out to the corner turned on his left peg swung around over the shoulder he would go back into the lead 4-3 26 on the clock yeah, certainly the kick out seems to be holding up around the 45 metre line, so that would tell you that there's something to think about out there. But still, just the point between the sides 4 3, Haywood leading Gussie Carroll's electrical. Our commentary sponsors, George Shuler Kyler has lit up many a field over the last couple of years. Gives it out here towards Cotter, the man that's been in the walls. He's in possession, he's been turned over now on this occasion by Colin Bourne, but the ball goes back to the ground, it's Mark McLaughlin picks it up. His hand was pulled surely when he tried to get that hand pass away. Referee was no more than two yards away from it. Now he is given a free for picking the ball on the ground. The Haywood manager down underneath his ears, his hands up and his head. I don't know what he's complaining about because he was a free about five seconds earlier. And he, as I say that, yeah, the referee is telling him to get up off the uh, sideline shall we say he's gone vanishing him to the stand well, there's just uh, a harmless enough old fence on the ground he'll stand outside it won't bother him too much but uh, the referee very much indicating Brendan he's not going to listen to it yeah he's all he's in charge you know, yeah <laughs> Absolutely, we'll look at the wire, as I said, as hard as he'll probably stand up against it, won't take too much of a notice, but, but he's still off the sideline, he's doing just that, leading up to the wire, away down here to our left-hand side, let's stay with the ball, Michael Lachlan has it coming forward, setting the dummy, does well, gets it away to Sean Minno, puts the ball to boot and drives forward, trying to get the challenge away, referee decided that he overcarried, he's happy enough to let the play continue with a free for Haywood, four points to three, 28 minutes on the clock at halftime as well, I will be going for an update to Derek Dormer in Clark Castle from the number 20 game, uh, Clare versus Wicklow in that Liam O'Connor Cup final with a ball through the centre. Could be a big moment here. Conor McAvoy bearing down on goal. Fantastic save. Unbelievable from John Ney. Getting down to his left-hand side and not just that. Palming the ball up onto an inner style of defender. And now they can bring it clear. He's been called on two or three times. And by God has he answered the call each time. Chance now for Innes Diamond to capitalise as Josh Glyler gets the ball out to the far side of the field. A sweeping counter-attacking move. Brian McNamara has it driving towards the 21 metre line. Tries to slip it inside but Ryan Quinlan, the full back for Haywood, read that one like a book. Stepped back into the space and knew exactly what was coming and now it's going to be a free out for the Haywood men. It's going to be taken quickly but once again John Nate to the rescue Brendan. That's a couple of times now that angle run in off the wing has caused a couple of problems, so it's just an area that in this time we'll have to be very, very wary of. They'll have to be wary of Sam Quinn here as well. He's coming in along the 21 metre line. Goyler with an outstanding tackle. If Crow Park are going to look back at the video of this, that'll be used in the coaching textbook, I've no doubt about that. Brilliant defending from the man wearing the number six jersey. Down the far side of the field now, Brian McNamara again swing around the head referee happy enough though to let the play go now Brian goes down because uh, in fairness he's entitled to I don't know why the Haywood lads are going after the ball it's going to be in his time and, and uh, once again just a loose enough on challenge there Brendan he's uh, just receiving a, a little bit of attention out there as well and uh, We'll just wait and see what uh, was going to come of this one. The referee is having a little chat with his lines down over on the far side of the field. 29 and a half gone, four points to three. Haywood leading uh, in his time here in this Senior C football decider. You mentioned about goals, Brendan. In fairness, I suppose it's Haywood who have created maybe the more obvious goal scoring chances, but they'll be very, very glad in his time if they can get in without a green flag going away. Yeah, they've had two, two good goal scoring chances here with the, in the last 10 minutes, but you know, in his time, they've had plenty of play up in the top half of the field, you know, we have got play on top of the D, um, or in, in around the square, maybe we we'll create the same cape cut chances, but, uh, you know, they're playing well enough to get a result here on the side. They certainly are, just the point between the sides, and as you mentioned, that breeze is, is getting stronger as well. Now, there's a little bit of uh, concern out there for uh, Brian Mack on the far side of the field as well. The uh, team of officials are inside, referee is having a chat with, uh, I don't know, is, is Tara inside there? She's around it somewhere anyway. 
and uh, his linesman here on the near side is coming in to have a chat with him. Has he heard or spotted something that has been said on the sideline down here in front of us? The uh, manager is very much off the field anyway for the moment and uh, we'll have play coming back in just a quick second. I think saw the referee just indicating there something about a head injury uh, perhaps so anything around there obviously now being very well taken care of and making sure that the player is okay first and foremost. Uh, the boy is up off the ground. Is he going to be walking off the field? No, I think he's going to take his place. We will resume and uh, have a couple of minutes injury time obviously before I uh, will be finishing up this first half. And uh, yeah, just what I think is if Brian Mack making his way off there. Uh, yeah, so just uh, we'll see at half time as we go back uh, towards the middle of the park for Shane Woods. He has it on the 65 metre line, linking up nicely there uh, with O'Loughlin on that occasion. Still coming, driving forward, Woods, ball just going out over the head of Liam Cotter there on that occasion, and it's been turned over once more. Haywood with the ball in the cornerback possession. Sam Quinn, we've said his name a lot here in this commentary in the opening half, so too has we said the name of Sean Fitzpatrick. He has now dropped deep to pick up that ball. It's Alan McAway, the joint captain, coming up and swarmed in the tackle there. What did he overplay for? for says the tackling was just a little bit too uh, vigorous, shall we say, from the, uh, the Kelleher outside the, the field there for the Haywood men. It's going to be a free. And you got, if uh, in this time we could just weather this little storm, Brendan, maybe pick a point before half time, they'd be content enough. Yeah, just uh, see how half time uh, yeah, we'll be happy enough. I think Mark went off there, Mark Darrow Keith went on. Yeah, I think he was the same. The referee certainly indicated something around the head area anyway. But uh, we'll wait and see. McDara has his first involvement, turning that ball over in the corner. Doing well now to come down the middle of the park here with Sean Lynn. Two points for him in this opening half. Takes the solo, takes and slips the pass through to Cotter. Now can he open up the space? Sells the dummy very well indeed. And now it's the turn of Shane Woods. Not for the first time this afternoon to attack right down that central channel. Just three Haywood men hanging off him. He wants a little bit of support to come. But just didn't. He just took that little bit too much out of it. In fairness, the tackle was clean and on the ball and very well done by the Leishman on this occasion. They lead four points to three. 32 44 is what the clock is telling us. Colin Byrne has it. Back again to this midfielder, McAvoy. A long ball attacking right in towards the edge of the D. And in fairness, I think they're, they're entitled to that free. The corner forward inside, Ben McDonald. Very much isolated, just a little pull on the shoulder. It'll be a free in for them and a chance, you would imagine, for this man, Alan McAvoy, to put two between the sides at half time but they've got joy Brendan haven't they when they've attacked the top of the D and kind of gone direct to the 21 they're creating problems yeah when they can get the ball in the goal this time the defence gets in place I suppose um, you know when they have a nice ball in the air and just you know um, they just they should put them through ahead really way the play for me here comes McIlwain with the free and does just that. The jumps inside and the goal make no difference because it goes straight over the bar. It's five points to three, 33 31 on the clock. And so we're not too far off the half time whistle. There was a, a couple of stoppages. Uh, referee, I think, is he telling him to, to kick it out? Let's just wait and see. Sending him back for the tee. So that would indicate that he's going to let just at least maybe one more play go. Uh, no, he's the hand out in front of him. I think he's looking for the ball. There goes the half time whistle. Yeah, five points to three. Haywood leading in his time in CBS. On the balance of play, Brendan, what's your view on that opening half? Yeah, I suppose, um, you know, when it's time to play some good football there off midfield, off the big platform there, trying to change it, and Sean Lane, that's why they're back for that one. He did a proper by Matt Bart, playing very well there, around the middle sector. And um, we really made it more than to defense, we just had to kick the score. The last time they were talking to you, the middle of the year, they were kicking the point, and we maybe took a pass to much, or maybe it's the wind. Maybe in the second half, if we get to that area, we'd be uh, more confident kicking with the wind. Absolutely, we'll have much more chat to come and an update as well uh, from Clare Castle. Derek Dormer is at that game, the under 20s, taking on Wicklow in that Liam O'Connor Cup developmental uh, final. We'll be getting an update from him very, very shortly. Don't go anywhere. But still, everybody rises now to see where this ball is going. In towards the 21 metre line, it comes. Could be a big chance here for the man wearing the number nine jersey. Slipping as he falls, but puts it over the bar. So towards O'Brien, recycles it back around again to Woods. He puts the hand pass into the danger zone, in towards the end of the line. Turns it over. First chance of the goal, and it flashes across. A brilliant. The ball on the ground, so it's a different level of game. I don't know what to do. 
With seven minutes on the clock, slightly to the left hand side of the post, standing on the 21 meter line. He looks happy enough for that. Taken by the number 10, Alan McAway. He looks to have made for that brilliantly, in fairness to him, the free taker. It was the first one he had with a sight of goal, 45 yards out. He splits the post. Three inter being averted as a boot came in there from Brian McDonough, but now in along the inline come the Hayward minutes. Fitzpatrick, what a save! Outstanding stuff from John Ney. Came out and closed down the angle. Down the angle, lovely angle, one well off the shoulder. Chance here as the defence swarms back. Back, gets the hand pass across here now once more towards Rin. Can he certainly can. That the space had to be closed down, and he did just that. And we'll wait and see as this free kick is taken, angled into the corner, in towards the man wearing the number eight jersey. Davin McAvoy swings the left boot. That's a fair versus Wicklow in that Liam O'Connor Cup final. But the ball through the centre could be a big moment here. Conor McAvoy bearing down on goal. Fantastic save. Unbelievable from John Ney. Getting down. Here comes McIlwain with the free and does just that. The jumps inside the goal. 33-31 on the clock. I'd say we're not too far off the half-time whistle. There was a, a couple of stoppages. Uh, referee, I think, is he telling him to, to kick it out? Let's just wait and see. Sending him back for the tee. So that would indicate that he's going to let just at least maybe one more play go. Uh, no, he's the hand out in front of him. I think he's looking for the ball. There goes the half-time whistle. Yeah, five points to three. Haywood leading in his final by the wing-back Brian McNamara. You'd certainly have felt that one. First shot at the post. In towards the post. A goal. The hands go up because it's gone straight between them. Brian Duggan from the Spink Club in County Mark Kelleher of Innes Diamond. Good hands from him to get away towards Sean Rin. Decides to link up with the midfield partner Woods. Back to Rin again. Off the left boot. That one has gone straight over the bar. But still, everybody rises now to see where this ball is going. In towards the 21 meter line it comes. Could be a big chance here for the man wearing the number nine jersey. Slipping as he falls, but puts it over the bar. In towards O'Brien. Recycles it back around again to Woods. He puts the hand pass into the danger zone. In towards the end of the line. Turns it over. First chance of the goal and it flashes across. A brilliant. Push the ball on the ground, so it's a different level of game. It's with seven minutes on the clock, slightly to the left-hand side of the post, standing on the 21-meter line. He looks happy enough for that. Taken by the number 10, Alan McAway. He looks to have measured that brilliantly, in fairness to him, the free-taker. It was the first one he had with a sight of goal, 45 yards out. He splits the post, three inter, being averted as a boot came in there from Brian McDonough, but now in along the inline come the Hayward minutes. Fitzpatrick, what a save! Outstanding stuff from John Ney. Came out and closed down the angle. Down the angle, lovely angle, one well off the shoulder. Chance here as the defence swarms Back, gets the hand pass across here now once more towards Rin. Can he end up over the bar? He certainly can. He's that the space had to be closed down and he did just that. And we'll wait and see as this free kick is taken, angled into the corner, in towards the man wearing the number eight jersey. Davin McAvoy swings the left boot. That's a fair versus Wicklow in that Liam O'Connor Cup final. But the ball through the centre. Could be a big moment here. Conor McAvoy bearing down on goal. Fantastic save. Unbelievable from John Ney. Getting down. Here comes McIlwain with the free and does just that. The jumps inside the goal. 33-31 on the clock. I'd say we're not too far off the half-time whistle. There was a couple of stoppages. Uh, referee, I think, is he telling him to, to kick it out? Let's just wait and see. Sending him back for the tee. So that would indicate that he's going to let just at least maybe one more play go. Uh, no, he's the hand out in front of him. I think he's looking for the ball. There goes the half-time whistle. Yeah, five points to three. Haywood leading in his final by the wing-back Brian McNamara. You'd certainly have felt that one. First shot at the post. In towards the post. The goal. The hands go up because it's gone straight between them. Brian Duggan from the Spink Club in County Mark Kelleher of Innes Diamond. Good hands from him to get away towards Sean Rin. Decides to link up with the midfield partner Woods. Back to Rin again. Off the left boot. That one has gone straight over the bar. But still, everybody rises now to see where this ball is going. In towards the 21 meter line it comes. Could be a big chance here for the man wearing the number nine jersey. Slipping as he falls but puts it over the bar. In towards O'Brien. Recycles it back around again to Woods. He puts the hand pass into the danger zone. In towards the end of the line. Turns it over. First chance of the goal and it flashes across. A brilliant push the ball on the ground. So it's a different level of game. It's a lot of deep in it. With seven minutes on the clock, slightly to the left-hand side of the post, standing on the 21-meter line. He looks happy enough for that. Taken by the number 10, Alan McAway. He looks to have measured that brilliantly, in fairness to him, the free-taker. It was the first one he had with a sight of goal, 45 yards out. He splits the post, three inter, being averted as a boot came in there from Brian McNamara, but now in along the inline come the Hayward minutes. Fitzpatrick, what a save! Outstanding stuff from John Ney. Came out and closed down the angle. Down the angle, lovely angle, one off the shoulder. Chance here as the defence swarms back, gets the hand pass across here now once more towards Rin. Can he end up over the bar? He certainly can. 
Please. That the space had to be closed down, and he did just that. And we'll wait and see as this free kick is taken, angled into the corner, in towards the man wearing the number eight jersey. Davin McAvoy swings the left boot. That's a fair versus Wicklow in that Liam O'Connor Cup final. But a ball through the centre. Could be a big moment here. Connor McAvoy bearing down on goal. Fantastic save. Unbelievable from John Ney. Getting down. Here comes back away with the free and does just act to jump inside the goal. 33 31 on the clock. And so we're not too far off the half time whistle. There was a, a couple of stoppages. Uh, referee, I think, is he telling him to, to kick it out? Let's just wait and see. Sending him back for the tee. So that would indicate that he's going to let just at least maybe one more play go. Uh, no, he's the hand out in front of him. I think he's looking for the ball. There goes the half time whistle. Yeah, five points to three. Haywood leading in his time by the wing back Brian McNamara. You'd certainly have felt that one. First shot at the post, in towards the post. The goal, the hands go up because it's gone straight between them. Brian Duggan from the Spink Club in County Mark Kelleher of Innes Diamond. Good hands from him to get away towards Sean Rin. Decides to link up with the midfield partner Woods. Back to Rin again. Off the left wing. That one has gone straight over the bar. But still, everybody rises now to see where this ball is going. In towards the 21 metre line, it comes. Could be a big chance here for the man wearing the number nine jersey. Slipping as he falls, but puts it over the bar. In towards O'Brien, recycles it back around again to Woods. He puts the hand pass into the danger zone. In towards the end of the line, turns it over. First chance of the goal, and it flashes across. A brilliant. The ball on the ground, so it's a different level of the game. I don't have to jump in it. With seven minutes on the clock, slightly to the left-hand side of the post, standing on the 21-metre line. He looks happy enough with that. Taken by the number 10, Alan McAway. He looks to have measured that brilliantly in fairness to him, the free-taker. It was the first one he had with a sight of goal, 45 yards out. He splits the post. Three inter, being averted as a boot came in there from Brian McNamara, but now in along the inline come the Haywood minutes. Fitzpatrick, what a save! Outstanding stuff from John Ney. Came out and closed down the angle. Down the angle, lovely angle, run off the shoulder. Chance here is a by nine points there on the finish but you know I have to say Derry were seriously well structured seriously well set up team and you know a very hard team to break down the uh, belt of the ball runs you heard there was because in a time and a back on onto the field so too are Haywood but uh, no sign of Brendan Healy just yet he's uh, taking the half time cup of tea to warm up a little bit here as the clouds just start to get a little bit rare. there's no fear of rain just yet but certainly that uh, breeze that we spoke about is uh, going to be a factor do you think it'll affect when you see Marco Lachlan pushing up or do you think they're going to go something similar to the first half yeah I think they'll play the same way you know if you look at that first half they had plenty of possession they just seemed to be a bit shot shy or not executing the shots properly up top but I thought we made great inroads there you know and had plenty of possession so you know Brian Mack is back on there he went off his blood so just for half time he's back on the pitch so that's good uh, good news from the Simon. So, you know, we ought to play for now in 30 minutes in Ireland the stake. I'm sure they'll leave everything to have out there now for the next 30 minutes. They'll know this is their last chance. There's an umpire about to make a 45 yard dash up to get up to his post. Uh, and wait to our left hand side here. The referee is going to wait until he's getting up there. Uh, he's just going down to that trot again around the 51 there. So, <laughs> we have to just wait until he gets back to, uh, to do just that. The supporters down here in the front of us to our right hand side. What a roar we'd get if we could get a goal for the Innes Time in and see what they're going to try and engineer that uh, in this uh, second half. It's five points to three. It's Haywood leading the CBS from Innes Time. The referee is ready. The umpire's back to his and the game is back underway and it's immediately a chance for Ennis Diamond through Cotter to launch that first attack by McNamara, his first involvement just turned over though on the 65 metre line and a combination of himself and Cotter since Colin Bourne flying in fairness that was a free and uh, it'll be a chance for the number 7 Killian Bourne one of the men that picked up the other card in that first half to get the game restarted here Conor McAway on his own 65 metre line and I was reliably informed by one of the stewards here in Dublin Park at half time that the goal that Haywood are scoring into is deemed locally as the scoring goals so whether that can be uh, ousted in this second half or not we'll have to wait and see it's Haywood though in possession of the ball and in possession of the lead five points to three and uh, the clock has restarted a little bit late but uh, it's restarted all the same and uh, Sean Fitzpatrick has it very very patient now you can see immediately when we speak about the breeze the way that they can't attack the D now they have to be patient because that Maginot line on the 45 is put up there by Ines Simon. Yeah they don't need to be uh, kick the early on. 
Niall Hogan is the hands out asking why I'd, I'd, be, I'd be doing the same if I was him to be honest I thought it was a good tackle on the ball but Conor McAway has it on the far side of the field looking back to our right hand side there's a line there's almost two lines of four and five defenders from an in assignment point of view just trying to cut down the space but it's Haywood busting into it and there's a free coming too for Conor Fitzpatrick who goes all the way through he takes the shot in fairness John Nace stood tall but the referee brings it back he was playing the advantage that had been very clear in fairness to him there was a little bit of a pull back on the shoulder as Fitzpatrick found the space to kick clear first free of the second half will come the way of Haywood it'll be Alan McAway that will take it and you have to say very well engineered here comes the first free into the wind for this man wearing the number 10 jersey he doesn't seem to take much notice of it as he lands a third of the afternoon for him he's the joint captain Alan McAway from Valley Road Abbey in the county of Leash his side Haywood this afternoon leading by six points to three just over two minutes gone here in the second half and important now from an in a Simon point of view Brendan the score two needed just not to let that gap go three or four yeah they don't need that the way the game is coming out you know it's not going to be a high scoring game so they need to stay in for the bounce all the time and see can they get a run under the club stage first kick out with the win for me tried to place it outside there to the midfield pairing but it's broken down again just a little bit scrappy trying to get that ball back into possession as Cotter does well to get up and get that ball away took a little bit of a dunk there on that occasion not the first time he's done that and won't be the last liner as we watch the hand again around the neck just a little bit high there but uh, Joshua Vaughan has the ball and now he gives it out to the far side of the field bursting forward down along the wing putting it into the middle of it and again just allowing the Haywood defence to take that ball on the 45 metre line it was a kind of a high looping hand pass and was perfect for a defender to come and attack and Haywood now have the ball very very patient in what they're doing Colin Byrne on his own 45 metre line Paddy Whelan is the wing back he has the ball now once more sweeping it back around here to Ty Deneen from the uh, St. Joseph's Club and Leaf sells the dummy finds the space Brian Duggan has it but all this working through the hands but they haven't gone beyond the two 65 metre lines marked out here in Duggan Park as the bow rods start to belt underneath us here the, the call to war maybe and the tune of the battle trying to get in this time and moving here and we just again it's all very very patient nice little slick hand passing moves little triangles coming and a ball thrown it down towards the 45 metre line long ball into the corner he won't take the mark because it bounced just before that it's Sean Fitzpatrick has it tries to send the dummy in along the and he comes puts across the hand pass and the ball is taken off the line miraculous stuff from John Nee how in God's name did he get back to take that ball off the line it looked all ends up that it was going to be battered into the corner but somewhere the white jersey came flying the glove stuck out scraped it off the line his goal remains intact that was heroic stuff is that the first warning shot that's been sent though you just wonder how many more of those he can produce yeah yeah Mark O'Loughlin thankfully back up onto his feet but you could see what was coming it's one of those we've seen those scores so many times everybody gets sucked into the fella coming along the end line forgets that the ball is going to be put back around the 21 and another big hit going in there referee just going to call the play back and uh, in fairness to Haywood lads feel a little bit aggrieved but there was an honest to God challenge there between Brian McNamara and uh, was it Sean Fitzpatrick I think as well Brian Mac is uh, still standing Fitzpatrick's on the ground and in fairness the referee is just going in to make sure everything is okay but he's happy enough with these it's a strange kind of a refereeing performance he's happy enough with the the uber manly stuff we'll call it but a little tone in the jersey didn't seem to get him all excited yeah times yeah I think in fairness that time both players had their eyes on the Definitely, ball and yeah. they were just being from slightly different angles and a big clash and, and uh, I'd imagine it's a, it'll have to be indirect, yeah. That's a, tries to recycle that ball back around here to the corner to Colin Byrne now on the left hand, right hand side of the field. Again, making for the in line, trying to that backdoor cut. We've heard that a lot in coaching terms in football in the last couple of weeks. As you, you wait and see, because he, he can't do that. So he has to go back to the 45 in towards Sean Fitzpatrick, back up on his feet. Sam Quinn has the ball, the cornerback coming forward in support now. It's Conor McAway that has it. It's uh, turned over though. Liam Cotter does very well indeed to get his hands on that ball and held it up to get the hand pass away at the right time to the reigning Kelleher down along the far side of the field. Lovely win there for Ian O'Reilly. Just did, used his body to try and shield the ball away but just couldn't win the primary possession. The defender's coming clear in fairness. There was two men pulling away at him. He had to give the free. 
but encouraging signs though Brendan you get the feeling that in his time are just getting closer to that one more clean pass getting away to open up the space yeah, well, he's he's moving freely enough outside the ring. The man wearing the number 18 jersey, the socks down low around the ankles, and the white boots. We've seen that for Clare squads the last couple of years. And by God, we hope you see it for plenty more as well. Let's see what he can do in these closing 24 or so minutes. Six and a half gone. It's Haywood leading six points to three. Gussie Carroll's electrical on the main street in Ennis Time, and your commentary sponsors here this afternoon. Delighted to have Gussie on board. Please, God, the first of many for him uh, with us here on Clare FM as we watch Haywood holding on to the ball around the own 45 metre line, just getting back to Duck now. A late challenge going in there. That's really fairness to him. Yeah, he really doesn't like the niggly stuff, this fella. And Joshua Guiner looks up and tries to find Brindy Roy in the first ball for him to try and win inside. It's well turned over. Brindy goes in to try and win it back. He's on his hands and knees over on the far side of the field. It's a scrappy enough one. I wouldn't be too surprised if this one is turned over. And it is. It's insane to rewind that has it. Putting it into the corner, trying to make that space. Someone now needs to come and attack the top of the D to put that ball across. And it's just shorted off it on the far side of the field. Very, very close to the end line. In fairness, the umpire was out there having a right good look at that. Happened right under his nose. And he was happy enough that the ball hadn't gone out of play. And it's Haywood who bring it clear. The double score, 6-3. Seven and a half minutes gone in this second half. It might be the wind at Innes Simon's back but as we said Haywood attacking what's traditionally known as the scoring goal here in the public park and that ball has been turned over because the pressure came on again three Innes Simon men converged there on Killian Byrne to force the over carry from him win the free and now they go darting off Sean Wynn with the whites of the boots flashing underneath him as he gives it back to Shane Woods on the 45 metre line on the swing comes Brendan Irwine wearing the number 18 jersey gives it out onto the far side of the field again trying to run up he's the man and links it up on the 21 metre line shortens up as he tries to put that one across the post and it goes out to the left hand side and wide a difficult enough angle Brendan for your first shot at the post yeah maybe he could have kept working it you know, need to keep the squeeze now on these kick outs as of course Cotter to break it down and does very well indeed to do just that but the second ball isn't coming it is somehow Joshua Vaughan and robbed it it's Josh Glyner that has it now looks up and tries to attack it right into the D with this man inside Quinn seems to be the spare man now just protecting because it seems to be very obvious from an assignment point of view Brindley is in at the top of the D as the danger man but Quinn is still going there's a lovely ball down here into the corner but Daryl O'Reilly reads that well ball won't break for him though referee says there was a pullback in the jersey uh, it didn't see what way he pointed the hand though but I'd imagine it's going to be an Innes time and free it certainly is and I think Liam Cotter <laughs> Liam Cotter has been told to walk maybe two and a half paces to his left hand side to where the free actually occurred and uh, he'll do that gladly in his time in possession of the ball but badly now in need of scores just three on the board with 39 on the clock Haywood have six in this uh, All-Ireland Senior C football final coming forward now on the road 45 metre line Darren O'Ryan gets the call off the stroller James Cullen as well to burst and break the line and gets the hand pass away to Alotrin and he returns it to Brian McNamara up towards the 45 metre line he comes trying to create the space still McNamara going brilliant tackle put in there just ball wouldn't come to the ground it was touched on the ground did as it was and for all the praise we gave in a Simon Brendan in that first half in terms of their tackling in fairness to Haywood they've been very very disciplined there yeah but yeah it's been consistent tackling close to the Uh, hit the top of the defence here of the Eagles and it's come out over the sideline it's going to be brought back though it'll be a free for him and I think when the referee eventually allows the play to continue as their manager continues to march here up and down the line on the outside so he's definitely he's covered more ground along the outside track than he ever did inside maybe he'd, he'd be quieter if he let him back in probably but uh, we'll uh, wait and see again that man Quinn he's been very very prominent Brendan and he's, he has certainly protected the top of the D there very well Excuse me, another sub in there for Innes Diamond, and that is number 24, Shawnee McMahon from the Innes Diamond club as well. This free has been turned over, Mark O'Loughlin coming onto it. Innes Diamond badly now in need of scores. They were racking them up big time in the games up to this, and they have to start getting on that board. McMahon goes in there trying to win that ball, getting swallowed up, swarm tackled there. Referee says just hold it up, and again, he's coming back to have a chat, and it looks as if it's Darrell Rewind is the latest man he's going to have a talk to and uh, I don't think it's coming to fairs he's going to be the topic of the conversation with him. 
Dara. Dara is just uh, has the hands on the hips and he's having a good old chat with himself and uh, the centre forward there, Sean Fitzpatrick. So whatever was going on, they were very much told, Brendan, it's not to continue. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure about that. We've already just been talking there. But I didn't even miss that. I know Captain now we've got them under big pressure around the middle of the field. They were really putting their champion on them around the middle of the field. So how's the ball going in? Absolutely, yeah, they're going to, you can see them flooding back there, almost like tip of the snooker table. You see all the balls back towards the block area. And one of them here is Ian Potter, as well to break that down. But again, Haywood are certainly winning these second balls and uh, putting the pressure on. But in fairness, brilliant tackle there from Brian McNamara to get that ball up. He was full around the head again as Joshua Vaughan gets the ball away into the centre. The referee comes back. Now he gets the free. The intensity is starting to ratchet up a little bit. But if it is time, it can start winning those second balls, Brendan. They can turn the tide of this. Yeah, you know, just to try and create one of the three points is a nice little chat now and here would be to be, you know, we'll come back and since everything's in a little bit. So it's a bit of a I've been trying to spread them and open them up, but, you know, a fierce contest out there between what when the team has the ball, opposition really throws them into that half. Ball now no, into Brindy Rewind, does well to trap it out, kicks back. No sign of a sore hamstring there as he comes in along the 21 metre line. Can he get the shot away? Flicks it into the centre and it's gone over the bar. One Rewind for another. It was Ada who finished it, but all the work made by Brindy. Beautiful angle run out to the corner, kick to heels and win for goal. Coming through the centre it was Aina Rewine, straight over the bar it went. Half a goal chance to take the point. Now, Brendan, the job is to build on this. Yeah, it was the ma number, number 11, I think, was the man that uh, finished it off. And uh, that is Aina Rewine from the Innes Diamond Club. Let's wait and see as Haywood now look to respond immediately and they're doing so again by attacking that centre channel. The number 13 is Colin Bourne coming right down to the top of the beat again. Swallowed up and off goes Cotter again taking that ball forward to the 45 metre line. Now needs to use it, needs the support to come and it does through Shane Woods. He throws it out to the far side to Kaylor. Again a low ball into the centre once more. Rewine has it in the far side of the field. Back again to Kaylor. And to the 21 metre line he comes. A very very tight angle. He probably won't see a shot from here. Have to work it in towards that score zone and have to be patient in doing just that as well. Sean Wren has it 45 yards out. Haywood now they've got the bodies back. All bar two are now behind the ball so the space has suddenly been swallowed up. It'll have to be a patient orchestrated move from here if they're going to get the point to bring it back to a one score game. Sean Keneally has the ball 45 yards out. Brian McNamara has it. Gets the call inside. Darryl Rewine is the man going right down the centre again trying to pick this ball. Can he get it before the end line does well to hold on to it. There's a little bit of a scaffolding here in front of us that's probably marking our view a little bit as Aina Rewine or Darryl Rewine and a fabulous beautiful angle score. He was standing for more than 10 yards in from that near stand sideline. Swung it with the right boost, over to the far post. It comes straight over the black spot. Exhibition score from the man wearing 11. Two points for him, five for Innes Diamond. One between them, Brendan, 14 gone, second half. Yeah, turned over that kick out again. Thought he was really thrown around fairly off that one, but the ball has been turned over again. It's the Haywood men have it. One point between the sides. 6 5 it is. 14 and a half minutes gone. Second half. Bussy Carroll, are you listening to this one in the main street there, Linus Diamond? As we watch the man being pulled up here, it's Marion Duggan that has the ball. Number 14, and he's back. The referee's going to call it back for a free, maybe a little bit earlier on, and it's going to be Sean Fitzpatrick to take it. High angle, dangerous ball inside, and it's well won by the midfielder there, Devin McAvoy. He plays it off towards Ben McDonald, a shot at the first, it goes to the right hand side, and it goes wide. It stays six points to Pete, six points for Haywood, five points for Innes Diamond. We're exactly midway through the second half and all Ireland title bring them there for whoever wants it now yeah, whoever wants it in the time, so you have the character but it's not been pressed all the way here by Haywood it's anyone's game it's a real dog fight out there no time on the ball uh, Captain's going in hot and heavy and we can keep the heads and keep moving the ball before the contact John May with the kick out seemed to be a little bit of a mix up in communication because there was about three in the players there that could have got their hands in it but instead it's been turned over Fitzpatrick has it and there's a spare man here now inside the top of the D if they can get it to him but no the space is being closed down big shot in from distance it's Brian Duggan with the shot at the post dropping Davis the inside square ball surely referee has to go and have a look at that one the ball is ended up inside in the back of the net there's no one too bothered about it well, I don't know. We I don't know. We, we, have, we hardly have VAR here in in in, in Ben and the Snow, but if they had, we could do it. And look back at that one, Brendan, because it was dodgy in the extreme. Yeah, 
the umpire is and it's 1-6 to Haywood. It's five points for Ellis Feynman. A big, big score in this game now for the Leishman. And it's up to Ellis Feynman to respond. They had brought it back to a one-point game. Mark Kelleher is galloping. But you wouldn't see that in Cheltenham next week. Up along the far stand side line he goes. Turns back down. Needs the support to come. And it does. Joshua Vaughan has it. Trying to work it into the centre. In towards Mark Wallach. And the space opens up. Sends the dummy. Lays it off. Can he get the ball to hand? No, the referee is going to bring it back. It's going to be a free in for Ellis Feynman. He saw a late challenge coming. Maybe four or five moves back in that particular sequence but a good strong response exactly what you need, want to see a team do Brendan rather than hang the head after a decision like that going against you you uh, go back down the field engineer the next scoring chance and hopefully make the most of it just up towards the, the 21 metre line maybe just a little bit beyond it between the 21 and 13 so I would imagine not, uh, now he's sending him go back another four or five yards and he'll have to trot out again to, uh, yeah, he told him bring it forward and then he sends him back out again to kick it from the more difficult angle 30 yards out right hand side of the pitch maybe 15 or 20 uh, to the right hand side of the goals as he shoots this one Brindy Rowan ball on the ground scoreboard telling us Haywood 1-6 in his time and 5 points 17 and a half minutes gone here in the second half in Duggan Park in Ballinasloe well, here comes Brindy Rowan we know this fella has a fair old strike of a ball he had the distance but the accuracy in this occasion just slightly lacking as it went out to the left hand side of the post and wide 1-6 to 5 17 and a half minutes gone but no reason to panic either no, just to get back into the game again, just go over to him. I think I'm going to get over, but we have to see when um, we put ourselves back into it. John Reed needs to get down at the far end of the pitch now to see if he might have some chances. Yeah, I'd say that's probably going back to the goal because there was a, a fair old contest in the air and it looks as if perhaps a, a dead leg or something you can see being treated there just around maybe the, the toy area. But uh, just going back to that goal, as you said, Brendan, I, I felt your man was nearly closer to the goal line than the keeper was for a long time. Yeah, he seems to be in there a long time under it because there's a kick from maybe 25 out and there's only just straight up there to the air a long time. We, we didn't spot him in the box where the ball was on the way in the air. So, um, you know, I think I was goal said. So. Well, that being said, we did say that there had been plenty of warning shots yeah. fired. You know, they, they had threatened the goal on a lot of occasions. So maybe on the balance of play, they probably deserve it at that stage. Probably do with the goal chances, but like, more point chances left behind us, you know. So. Both sides using the uh, little break and play here as an opportunity to uh, take water on board. Uh, thankfully, no more water breaks in Gaelic games, but when you get the chance to take it, you'll do just that. Uh, Johnny is still receiving attention down here to our right hand side, just being checked on there as well by his full back. Uh, Dara Rewind, when the play will resume, it'll be a kick out for the uh, Haywood men and Liam Cure from the Spin Club up there. 19 minutes on the clock, but we haven't had play for about maybe a minute and a half or so. So now, time for cool heads, Brendan, time for leaders just to keep trucking over. They'll have enough experience to know that a game, a game isn't gone on the 20th minute. all ends up like a, a kind of a dead leg injury over there for uh, John May he'd been, he'd been outstanding in this game so far but yeah, he, if there is a, a, a positive result from an Ennis Diamond point of view maybe look at the likes of himself and uh, Cotter maybe is potential man of the match candidate so when you have a referee or when you have a goalkeeper in contention for that it'll tell you a lot about the performance that he's put in some outstanding saves in that game just a pity that he can't see it out to its conclusion that conclusion will come with 10 plus injury time to go here in Duggan Park kick out for D. Haywood men dropping in the middle of the park trying to get his hands on it there for Shane Woods Byler goes back to pick it up the socks up around the knee puts it out to the far side of the field it's a dangerous enough ball for Kelleher it's been turned over and again it's Brian Duggan with that long dangerous ball inside Ryan is inside and this just misjudged the flight of it and it's another chance here for the Haywood men second goal into the back of the nest Sean Fitzpatrick was the man that finished it that is a cruel cruel blow two goals in nearly as many minutes that one coming a big high looping ball inside just trailed in fairness to Fitzpatrick he kind of gambled on a goal behind him he did just that and from a very tight angle rolled it over the goalkeeper 20 minutes on the clock it's Haywood 2-6 it's Ennis Diamond 5 points that one kind of sucks the wind out of you doesn't it yeah I think we have to come back now um
Well, can Brindley arrive in a moment and drive this difference down towards the 21 meter line? He comes, big strong win, surely pushed in the back. Referee lets the play go forward. A chance to respond straight away, but a brilliant save inside in the goal. It was shot Brian McNamara with the shot, but in fairness, for all the saves we saw in the opening half from Lee, the uh, Haywood keeper stood tall on that occasion, but the danger still not cleared. Mark Kelleher on the 21 meter line, referee saying the hand is up for advantage, it's going to be a free in. Big, big chance in the game that would have put it right back into the melting pot, but in fairness to Lee, Kjobrin and stood tall and did everything you'd tell a goalkeeper to do. It is Sean Wren is the man that will take it right in front of the goal to make no mistake with that. It's back now to that six point game. Those goals the difference. Two six for Haywood, six points for the time in CBS. 22 minutes on the clock, but I'd imagine we're going to be hitting towards 35 or so before this game finishes because of all the stoppages we've had. So it's just about now, Brendan, again, keeping that pressure on the kick out and just bring it down to maybe the two or three and bring it right to that final whistle. Liam Cotter, yeah, Liam Cotter and Guyler inside trying to pick that ball away from the rook with just everything now going Haywood's way, referee spotted a push in the back there on that occasion and uh, I think in fairness he, he did, there was a, a hand placed on the back and you always coach young fellow when you're going down on the ball and you feel that contact, you're going to get your free. It's happened very, very close to the sideline here and the uh, referee just going over to make sure everything is okay and uh, he's having a chat there with one of the officials as well just to make sure that your man will be back up on his feet. He's the wing back, uh, Killian Bourne. He has had a fine game in fairness to him but, you know, did the goals, Brendan, did they come somewhat against the run of play? I suppose, you know, it did open us a few times and we had it said, you know, that, that, that they were open us with the two goals that came actually were fortuitous enough to yeah. finish, you know. Um, it's impossible to walk with six points up and a loss on the But the assignment has been as good as the last year on the way, you know. One more so than this man, Liam Cotter again coming on to win a dirty breaking ball there and looks up and Guyler is the out ball again and coming forward now is Brian McNamara. Big goal chance for him just a couple of moments ago but I've no doubt he'll keep raining forward. It's Cotter switching the point attack across to the far side of the field to Aina Rewine. Two outstanding scores for him that brought the game back to a one point game before those sucker punch goals came. He still has the ball, still going down along that far stand sideline, cutting back inside, needs the help to come and it does from Shane Woods trying to play that hand pass inside. Just goes out over the top. Surely there was a push in the back there. Referee is happy enough to be able to continue because it's Kayla who has it. Recycling it all the way back around now towards Rewind again on the 21. Just getting a little bit isolated out there. They just need to work it back to the top of the D in towards that scoring zone. Guyler has it across to Marco Lachlan. That's exactly where he is now. Out here towards Brendan Rewind. Straight away met with a frontal challenge. Referee is going to have to deal with this one. It will be a free in for Innes Diamond. Bravery from Brindley. You'd expect nothing less as he took that ball. Knew the challenge was, and was going to come. Held on to it. Won his free and the referee will have a little chat now at one of the leash boys. Yeah, it's, uh, I think their fourth uh, yellow card, if I'm not mistaken, of the afternoon. And uh, Tara Rin is inside just having a, a little chat there with the referee as well. And uh, I see the parents down here in front of us, so we better be careful uh, what we're saying about what she might have said to the referee. But uh, Brindy Roy has the ball right in front of us, 30 yards out from the goals. We won't put the jinx on him, we'll just wait for him to kick it. 2 6 to 6 is how it stands. 25 minutes on the clock. Go see Carroll's in the main street for comments for sponsors from Innes Fyman as we watch another substitution coming in for the Haywood men. Let's watch Brindy take the free. That one goes over the bar with the minimum of effort, minimum of fuss. Good score for him. Bringing it back out to a five point game. Just put the squeeze now on the kick out and try and camp Brindon inside that 45. <laughs> wanting for heart and drive and effort anyway we know that much about this group of players as we mentioned that All-Ireland hurling final to come back here in uh, Ballinasloe next Saturday afternoon a game will bring to you live here on Clare FM and indeed as well anybody watching uh, on the stream you'll have that service provided to you next week as well so we've got you covered no matter what the story is onto the 45 metre line it's Haywood have the ball onto the 65 now spreading the field wide here towards Colin Brown can't get there before the 
ball goes out over the sideline. It'll be a line ball for Ennis Fyman taken quickly by Martin Lockton into the hands of Josh Gleiner. Up towards the 65 metre line he comes, takes the solo, has to look up and get the support coming forward from Sean Keneally in towards O'Loughlin again. He's been a great link man between those two 45 metre lines. Cotter has been fighting on his hands and knees all day long. Long hand pass inside towards Brian McNamara. Does well to get the ball away and releases it now towards Rashani McMahon but just couldn't get there before the Haywood defence had got back in numbers. They've turned over the ball again. 2-6 Haywood, 7 points in the Slyman. 26 and a half minutes gone. I suppose we were trying to we were trying to force it like that, Brendan, and everything has to be just so accurate. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, they certainly are and again have turned that ball over it's Mack and uh, Cotter that have been outstanding here so far but again Haywood back in numbers and now have that ball kicked clear right down the centre it comes with Daryl Rewine is out in front on this occasion holds on to the ball O'Loughlin says there's the space going attack it and he does just that now slides a lovely little pass towards Cotter there's one of the uh, in his time in down at the minute just receiving a little bit of attention but the play goes on around him it's Josh Geiler that has it plays it into the centre now in his time and trying to engineer that scoring chance big high looping ball from Rewine but it goes out to the left and wide it was Aina that swung the boot on that occasion just went out to the left hand side and wide scoring opportunities Brendan we've said it from the second or third minute there's been a couple that'll be a regret I'd imagine yeah we'll be somewhere around four or five minutes of additional time anyway so we've two plus that additional time to come. It's Haywood 2-6, it's in a Simon CBS 7 points referee. Uh, just waiting for a Haywood substitution to be made there. I think there's that Brian Mack that's done, uh, still just getting stretched out a little bit of crap, maybe affecting him here in these final couple of minutes. He has ran himself to a standstill in fairness to him this afternoon. He's been everywhere himself and Cotter as an inch of wing back being outstanding. So too has Aina Rewine on that ball, but again just ripped from him. The numbers and the, the force and the tackle from Haywood. You, you said it, Brendan, when you saw it coming out on the field, like they are a big, big physical team, even though the ball has been turned over here again. But they've started to use that now as bodies tired, haven't they? They are, yeah. You know, they just slow on the ball and the bodies in around the They slow that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll take that. Because <laughs> uh, uh, Brindley had gone just floating it in around the square to see if somebody get on the end of it. Instead, now he'll have a chance to put it over the bar, bring it back for maybe something manageable with four points, maybe six or seven minutes, uh, including the initial time possibly to go. It would be a positive if he can get this one over on the first occasion. He's the inside of the post, and that is just summing up the look that has maybe just deserted uh, in a Simon in this second half. And even there on that occasion, trying to go pick up the ball with Mark Kelleher, put his foot on the top of it and went out over it. The free hit the inside of the post, wouldn't break for Shawnee McMahon. And again, Haywood just trying to work that ball clear. Even the ricochets are starting to go their way now as the ball falls on the 45 metre line. Good work back there again, though. And Josh Dyler trying to pick that ball up from the break. The rook develops over in the far side of the field. Referee's having a right good look at this. And the only option he can come up with is to hop that ball. But, uh, you know, if you're looking, Brendan, for a, a microcosm of it might not be your day, we saw it there. Yeah, just again, after Absolutely, yeah, you can certainly effort won't be faulted on either side. Both teams have left everything they have out there. But it looks as if those goals are going to be the decisive factor in this game as Hayward can looking forward for another score. Brilliant defending there again from Daryl Lewine but holding on to that ball with a right hold battle. Sean Fitzpatrick has it, pops it into the centre. The strong running there from the midfielder McAvoy tries to loop it back around again to Fitzpatrick, sells the dummy, goes to ground, trying to buy the free. Fantastic tackle again. Cotter was the man that got his hand on the ball. Joshua Bohan has it, tried to play it over the top to Brindy Rewine, but in fairness, Connor McAway had read the space, knew where the ball was going, just stepped back and brought it to ground. But Brindy's fighting over and he gets that ball up on the 65 metre line. Now he goes long. Big long ball into the centre into our shin woods. But it just wouldn't drop down out of his shoulder. He had made beautiful space inside. Just couldn't get the ball to come. It was written that was inside in the end of that one. Just, oh, he did everything that you'd want an attacker to do. Just shielded the ball with his body. It just wouldn't drop into his arms because he would have been one-on-one -on -one Brendan there if he got through. Yeah, the band the ball in. It looked as if he had just stolen that hand. Good 
intelligent defending once again though from Ines Steinerman has seen the ball recycled back around to Joshua Geiler he's driving up towards the 45 metre line looking in around the square it's fairly deserted there's three on one inside there so they're just going to have to wait for a bit more support to come up Brendy Irwine has the ball into the middle it comes in towards this man Shane Woods uh, gives it back around again to Geiler you can see the space is just all choked up there's a uh, a bank of two or three defenders just waiting around the top of that D. Inerowine has it recycled it back around again. It's getting towards urgency now. There's 31 on the clock. It's two six to seven points. It's Haywood leading. Here comes a shot from Sean Wren. It's high in towards the post. It's going to drop dangerously inside. It's taken off the line from the angle of post and crossbar. Somehow, Liam Kyo got his hand up. It looked as if that was going to drop short maybe into the net. But Kyo got up the paw and took it away. Turned it behind for a 45. Brilliant goalkeeping, you have to say, from the young Eastman. Absolutely, this ball is one it has to be dropped in around the zone, but it might be just too little too late. We'll have 32 minutes on the clock by the time Josh Geiler kicks this 45. There is a whole host of players inside around the square. If you're watching on the stream, you can see just how packed that goal mouth is as we're just waiting for the referee. I think was he tying a boot for someone there? No, he's happy enough to let the play continue. Josh Geiler with the 45. 2 6 for him with seven points in his time in CBS. 32 minutes on the clock in this second half. Geiler just chipping it in there on the danger zone ball bobbling around someone just needs to throw a stray old boot on this to try and get it in towards the goals recycles it back dinky little ball in that just drops over the bar it was Shane Woods that the man got the ball in on that occasion in fact sorry it was actually Sean Rin with his four points in the afternoon doing what you wanted to do just dropping it in towards the crossbar it's another point for them it brings it back to four 32 and a half on the clock two six to eight points and they can just keep going now to that final whistle the stoppages that we've had kick out taken need to win this ball on the far side of the field Josh Geiler does just that but he puts it out over the sideline it'll be a line ball to Haywood that the errant and shouldn't be any major panic to take but he does he takes it because Fitzpatrick comes forward up to the 45 brilliant steal from Marco Lachlan one hand and back to Brendan Irwine he's on the 65 metre line though everybody now needs to pour in towards that goal Geiler has the ball gets the call from Brendan to give it back to him tries to shape lovely little dummy buys the space is he going to get wrapped up though he is ball goes back to the ground he has to recycle it to James Cullen as well gets it away to Potter sends a lovely dummy slips it to Marco Lachlan now we have the ball with McDarrow O'Keefe into the centre and once again the defence from Haywood brilliant just stood up broke from the line gambled on defending that and did it brilliantly and they swept it now from one side of the field to the other when your line goes back that's going to be a free and imagine the referee is letting the play continue he's allowing the advantage to accrue and he's happy enough to let the play go on Haywood in possession 2-6 to 8 points the clock with the green numbers telling us 32 3.50 at the moment I'd imagine we're heading towards 35 or 6 it's the midfielder McAvoy has the ball he's into a bit of space with the Kittone this one with Felix there you go it's done and dusted I'd imagine brilliant score swept from one side of the field to the other it's Haywood 2-7 it's in a time at 8 points 34 on the clock Brendan a valiant effort looks like it's going to just come up short yeah a good score there from Haywood the time we're under attack to one all over time to the just left Showing, yeah, showing great heart in these closing stages to keep going as they look and try maybe engineer a scoring opportunity Kelleher on the far side of the field plays it into Woods just sends the dummy tries to get the pass away in towards O'Loughlin he's on the arc with the D's he takes this ball again just rips on him very very disciplined tackling here in this second half from the leash outfit as they turn that ball over Brindley has it kicks the heels tries to make the space three men around him hanging off him but he's still going driving forward referee has the hand up for advantage it's going to be a free in and this time well we're in Galway country could be Michael Mihanesk as he drives that ball forwards and a brilliant save inside again fantastic that one looked destined to the top left corner and once again Liam Kyo inside the goal for the Leishman threw himself down to his right hand side deflected it back for a 45 it's all Brindy could do is take the gamble Brendan but your man inside the goal is in some form Josh Geiler will take the 45 I'd imagine to be close to the last action of the game he's going to drop it in around the danger zone up the hands go where's this one going to break in the waiting arms of the Leishman as the full time whistle goes and they are crowned all Ireland senior C football champions 
Those two second half goals to send the men in the maroon jerseys flying in to celebrate. The flags wave here in Dublin Park in Battle of Slow. A full time score, Haywood two goals in seven in a style of eight points. Brendan, you might sum it up for us. Yeah, look at it. It's a It'll be look back on obviously Brendan as a fantastic year, but they'll have to refocus now. You know, I think it's about 20 or 21 of a crossover between this panel and the hurling panel. I think uh, I heard the principal speaking on morning focus uh, on Friday, saying that uh, no matter what happens, recovery now only hint in the morning and try and refocus again. Not an easy thing to do. No, well, especially after the defeat, it's obviously to recover after victories. Um, of course, you know, they're a good bunch of lads. But, you know, they take their sport serious. Um, you know, they'll be down for a few hours, but they'll really focus and deal with the like, deal with defeats and deal with injuries and, you know, enjoy it, enjoy it, and play the part with it. Today, just wasn't our goals, conceded the goals, and just couldn't buy a few points that it, it, it was working too much. Unfortunately, on this occasion in Duggan Park, it is defeat for Ennis Time and CBS. Hopefully, they turn that around in seven days' time and they're back here again for the Hurling Decider again. As we said, you can hear and watch live with us here on Clear FM. For the moment, my thanks to Brendan here on analysis with us throughout the afternoon, to Brian McLaughlin back at base, to Alan and all his crew on the camera work as well, and also to our commentary sponsors, the Carroll's Electrical. Go see it on the crew there on the main street in Ennis Diamond. Disappointment here in Battle of this afternoon, but uh, as we said, hopefully Ennis Diamond can turn that around in seven days time in that hurling decider don't go anywhere before we'll be handing back to brian very shortly but also that under 20 game is underway it should be by the wing back brian mcnamara you'd certainly have felt that one first shot at the post in towards the post to go the hands go up because it's gone straight between them brian duggan from the spink club in county mark Kelleher of innes diamond good hands from him to get away towards sean rin decides to link up with the midfield partner woods back to rin again off the left field that one has gone straight over the bar but still everybody rises now to see where this ball is going in towards the 21 meter line it comes could be a big chance here for the man wearing the number nine jersey slipping as he falls but puts it over the bar in towards o'brien recycles it back around again to woods he puts the hand pass into the danger zone in towards the end of the line turns it over first chance of the goal and it flashes across a brilliant the ball on the ground so it's a different level of game it's with seven minutes on the clock, slightly to the left-hand side of the post, standing on the 21-meter line. He looks happy enough for that. Taken by the number 10, Alan McAway. He looks to have measured that brilliantly in fairness to him, the free-taker. It was the first one he had with a sighted goal, 45 yards out. He splits the post. Three being averted as a boot came in there from Brian McNamara, but now in along the inline come the Haywood minutes. Fitzpatrick, what a save! Outstanding stuff from John Ney. Came out and closed down the angle. Down the angle, lovely angle run off the shoulder. Chance here as the defence swarms back. Gets the hand pass across here now once more towards Rin. Can he end it over the bar? He certainly can. He's that the space had to be closed down and he did just that and we'll wait and see as this free kick is taken angled into the corner in towards the man wearing the number 8 jersey Davin McAvoy swings the left foot that's a fair versus Wicklow in that Liam O'Connor Cup final but the ball through the centre could be a big moment here Conor McAvoy bearing down on goal fantastic save unbelievable from John Ney getting down Here comes McIlwain with the free and does just that to jumps inside the goal. 33-31 on the clock. I'd say we're not too far off the half-time whistle. There was a, a couple of stoppages. Uh, referee, I think, is he telling him to, to kick it out? Let's just wait and see. Sending him back for the tee. So that would indicate that he's going to let just at least maybe one more play go. Uh, no, he's the hand out in front of him. I think he's looking for the ball. There goes the half-time whistle. Yeah, five points to three. Haywood leading in his time. 
the first free into the wind for this man wearing the number 10 jersey. He doesn't seem to take much notice of it. As he puts across the hand pass and the ball is taken off the line. Miraculous stuff from John Lee. How in God's name did he get back to take that ball off the line? It looked all in up. And it kicks back. No sign of a sore hamstring there as he comes in along the 21 metre line. Can he get the shot away? Flicks it into the centre and it's gone over the bar. One more line for another. It was in. Before the inline does well to hold on to it, there's a little bit of a scaffolding here in front of us that's probably marking our view a little bit as Aina and Rewai, or Gara Rewai, Aina and Rewai, and it's fabulous. I believe they can get it to him, but no, the space is being closed down, big shot in from distance, it's Brian Duggan with the shot at the post, dropping Davis the inside, square ball, surely referee has to go. It is Sean Wynn, it's the man that will take it right in front of the coming in for the Haywood men. Let's watch Brindley take the free. That one goes over the bar with the minimum of effort, minimum of fuss. Good score for him, bringing it back out to a five point game. It's going to be a free in, and this time, well, we're in Galway country. Could be Michael Meehan esque as he drives that ball forwards and a brilliant save inside again. Fantastic, that one looked destined for the throw himself down to his right hand side, deflected it back for a 45. It's all Brindley could do is take the gamble, Brendan, but your man inside the goal is in some form. Josh Geiler will take the 45, I'd imagine, to be close to the last action of the game. He's going to drop it in around the danger zone, up the hands go. Where is this one going to break in the waiting arms of the Leishman as the full-time whistle goes and they are crowned All-Ireland Senior C football champions. Those two second-half goals to send them in in the maroon jerseys flying in to celebrate. The flags wave here in Dublin Park in Battle of Slow. The full-time score, Haywood, two goals in seven in a time of eight points. Brendan, you might sum it up for us. Yeah, look at it. said that the difference is more just on both sides. It's a bit clear of the old, maybe the majority, maybe the second half of the position with the two goals and pillars. They had opened a few times before that, and the keeper, John Lee, could not be a clear. But overall, you know. By the wing back, Brian McNamara, you'd certainly have felt that one. First shot at the post, in towards the post to go. The hands go up because it's gone straight between them. Brian Duggan from the Spink Club in County Mark Kayla.